everyone and welcome to Rad Chat, the multi-award winning therapeutic radiographer-led oncology podcast. My name is Joe McNamara and I'm joined by fellow host, Norman Joel Camston. Hi everyone. So we're here at UKIO and we've got an amazing guest who's been dragged in the pod box <laughs> under duress. Um, so would you like to introduce yourself? Sure. Um, so my name is Gemma Walsh and I am a research assistant at City University, currently working on a project with regards to radiographers' professional identity and our responsibilities and roles and how they might change um, in the future with the introduction of AI. Um, I'm also a diagnostic radiographer, um, part-time, specialising in MRI, but I do also work in CT and X-ray. Um, yeah, it's pretty much me in a nutshell. Amazing. <laughs> Why did you pick diagnostic radiography? Um, for the variety. Um, I had previously done a degree in biology, and as wonderful as it was, it didn't lead on to anything. Um, so then I worked a couple of years as a diabetic retinal screener, which I enjoyed, but then it didn't have the career progression. It was the same thing day in, day out. And one of my colleagues, her daughter was a radiographer, and she was like, oh, have you considered radiography? And I was like, oh, no, because it's what I'm doing now, in a dark room, taking pictures all day. Yeah. And she was like, no, it's so much more. And I did a day's work experience, and I was just sold the career options, the different paths we could go down. And, yeah, here I am, taking one of those career paths. <laughs> <laughs> so can you explain to us a little bit about what got you into research? Because, again... I think sometimes it's really easy for people to have a perception of research or, oh, I'm not a researcher, research is a bit scary. You know, yeah. For someone who's in practice, it would be great for them to hear your story and what led you into your current realm. Yeah, so I think um, for me, I've always liked to know the reasons behind something. So when you can practice, if you've got a policy or protocol, I'm forever asking why, what's, what's behind this. And so... Um, from that perspective, I really appreciated research. And then, um, again, always chasing the next thing. I've become an MRI lead within the NHS, and as much as I was enjoying it, I was like, where can we go, what's next? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And um, and that coupled with research, um, the opportunity came up to do my master's, which I um, which I did. And then just I've just gone with the flow since that. That's, you know, it was through doing my master's, my supervisor then asked um, if I was interested in publishing my thesis, which I didn't ever think was an option. And so I was like, okay, and I did, and it was an enjoyable process, and our relationships continued beyond that. And yeah, here I am. So do you want to tell us a little bit about the research that you're involved in at the moment? Yes, so um, I, again, have an interest in radiography. I did have an interest in the introduction of AI. Um, I was lucky enough that my um, employer paid for me to go on the AI Introduction to AI for Radio Office course at City Uni, and that really sparked my interest further. I um, then thought about doing a PhD, but I wasn't sure where. Like, I knew I had an interest in AI, but I'm certainly not a computer programmer <laughs> or yeah. anything like that. Um, I then, um, I did actually, going from an MRI lead role, I then um, took on a research radiography role and um, it was then working in clinical research, I was delivering on a lot of AI based projects in the NHS, um, which I was doing and enjoying, but then I was being introduced to other specialities, say like respiratory, as the team's AI expert because um, I had the biggest knowledge on AI, even though I still was nowhere near an expert. Yeah. And so I was like, there's definitely a gap here for an AI lead. Yeah. And I think radiologists are the perfect person to fill that. And so this project that I'm working on at the minute is just to get an understanding of how radiographers think that their roles and identities might change in the future and whether they could see themselves as AI leaders because of the way our um, professions mix technology with patient care and so I think there's a need for an AI lead locally in like each radiology department and um, but I think we could also expand again another career path for radiographers you know trust wide there's research to suggest that there should be like an AI governance team that sits alongside information governance and IT governance I think radiographers are just perfect to fill that and you know even if then at a national level I think radiographers just because of our skills and our knowledge. 
So I'm trying to drive that. So I'm hoping, <laughs> hoping uh, later in the year or next year, hopefully to start a PhD and it will be hopefully to develop this. I always uh, laugh because there is a, there was an AI lead, I'm sure, for um, an organisation and it was a physio. And my first response was, why is a radiographer not in that role? <laughs> um, because it... Because physios get all the roles, <laughs> that's why. There's too many of them. All the, all the cheap HPs are always there, <laughs> they get all the money. Yeah. Yes. But it, you're right, it's that skill set, isn't it? And I don't think so we perfect. champion ourselves enough. Sorry yeah. to interrupt. Um, yeah. I, I really don't think we do as radiographers. As you said, we're in a dark room. Yeah. Or like us in a, in a really thick bunker in the middle of... <laughs> And I understand that all AHPs are very busy, but I think just in radiology, we just don't stop, do yeah. we? You know, yeah. it's just, and so you're trying to get radio officers to think outside the box, and you know, or you could also, we could be this. It's like, oh, I can't cope with this, let alone yeah. that, you know, so it's just trying to, but I think if we could, if the role could be built and it was structured and there was an entry path yeah. and it was a, an actual thing, then yeah, I think radio officers could fly. But, um, I have a question. How can you govern something that's smarter than you? <laughs> that is a question. And, um, <laughs> yeah, I think you can only hope. I did um, watch a, it was quite deep, a YouTube video. I can't remember who posted it. Um, but it was very much like you're trying to predict the unpredictable yeah. to stop it from happening or to put things in place, governance in place to stop it and I think it's just with AI, I think whether we think it's good or bad, it's happening so we just have to go with the flow and we've just got to put as much governance and that in place as we can but I think things will happen and that will pop up where we've not seen it happening but yeah. What is the governance? So I'm thinking from a patient's perspective listening to this podcast episode, what what would they see in a department within the literature that shows the actual governance? Like, what is the physical stop on the use of AI? I think it's still a very much a grey area. Right. Okay. It's very much so you can put an AI, so many of our scanners and stuff now come with AI integrated into it. Um, and we're using it and we don't realise it's even there. Like I think yeah. a lot of radio officers are using it and not, and you know, patients don't know it's there, radio officers don't know it's there, it's just being used. But the nature of AI is that it needs to continually learn and it needs to continually develop. And I think there's a big grey area as to whether, who is responsible for that AI to continue its learning. Yeah. Is it the manufacturers of the person that made it and the company that made it? Or is it the person that's bought it and acquired it? Is it their job? And I think it's still... I know there are companies out there that are dedicated to this um, sort of grey area and they probably yeah. they would know a lot more than me. Yeah. But um, but that's my understanding of it. It's, yeah, and that's another whole other area of research is to, and policies and frameworks that are being put in place as to and yeah, and again the patients are like I think we really need to know the patient's point of view on AI and yeah. how they feel about it, but I don't know that the knowledge around AI is enough to ask them yeah. because you know what's in the media is all about chat GPT and um, you know see on social media they're just using AI to change celebrities faces like yeah. they don't think to actually understand the nitty gritty of it so I think to ask them they need to first know more about yeah. it so it's yeah. just yeah I feel like AI that was going fast, like we haven't got time for that because yeah. it's coming into practice. But yeah. patients definitely need to be brought along for the ride. And to be it's almost like you have to do PPI work, but within that educational setting, within the research, which yes. is very different to how you would ordinarily do a piece of research with collaborating with patients. Yes, and preferably um, before AI is being implemented, but it's. Yeah. Yeah, it's <laughs> all running away from us. But it's like, like you said, like governance is just putting in place what we can with the resources we've got. Yeah. yeah. What advice would you give to anyone who doesn't yet have the confidence to do any research? Go for it. If you are really interested in it, go for it. I have had to make some big career changes um, to accommodate it. Um, you know, initially you do have to be driven.
in and you do have to um, do quite a bit of work in your own time. Um, but that does pay off, the opportunities do then arise to be involved in, in paid research and to um, start doing your own research. So it's just stick with it, is essentially it. But, um, but yeah, when there's a will, there's a way. And what are you doing your PhD on? Have you decided yet? AI leadership. Amazing. Yes. <laughs> so that's what I, yeah, AI leadership roles for radiographers is what I hope to. Amazing. Did you ask ChatGBT what to do your PhD? <laughs> <laughs> no, I sat and thought long and hard about it. <laughs> oh, well, but, yeah. Thank you so much for joining us on the podcast and hopefully we'll be able to have you back when you've completed your PhD and fill us in on everything that you've done. Yeah, no, awesome. Thank you. Cool, cheers. Thanks, guys. <laughs>